Tonight on News 22, the candidates for NMSU president will soon visit campus. The health of New Mexico citizens is improving, but there's still a long way to go. And Native American students serve up a tasty lunch. News 22 starts now. Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Mallory. And I'm Rebecca Atkins. The New Mexico Department of Health released its latest report on the health of New Mexicans, and from the looks of it, it appears to be getting better. The findings show slightly fewer teens are smoking. The rate dropped from 30.2% in 2003 to 19.9% .9 in 2011. Students whose parents had higher education were less likely to smoke and less likely to be sexually active. Suicide attempts among high school students have decreased from 14.5% to 8.6% in 2011. As for adult health, 47% of women who had a baby in 2010 did not want to be pregnant at all or they wanted to be at a later time. More than one in four adults ages 45 and older were diagnosed with two or more chronic diseases. And the top reason for hospitalization for people 65 and older are heart disease, flu, and pneumonia, septicemia, and injury from falls. If you would like to see the complete report, go to www.nmhealth.org. Speaking of health, how will the new health care law affect you? Next Monday, NMSU is sponsoring a health reform law workshop. It will deal with the changes coming in health care during the next nine months. The meeting will be held from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Monday, April 15th in Corbett Center, Colfax Room 210. Even though drug use among teenagers tends to fluctuate, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse says one in five high school students admit they have come to school under the influence. As Katie Bieri reports, hitting that high can have a lasting consequence. One local high school student admits smoking marijuana has caused him to lose perspective on things that matter. If you smoke it fairly consistently, it sort of just dims your view on what's important. Whether we know their faces or not, there are many students in classrooms just like this one at Las Cruces High School who struggle with drug addiction or potential relapse. But where can these students go when their challenges get too hard to handle? Medical provider for Las Cruces High's student-based health center, Shannon Rodriguez, encourages students to talk to their counselors if they have a problem. The counselors they can see here can work with them on um, better decision-making skills, changing their coping mechanisms. Las Cruces High Vice Principal Anthony Chavez emphasizes that one wrong decision can hurt a student forever. Sometimes kids make a mistake, and it's a one-time mistake. They're probably never, ever going to do it again. And it can affect a lot of things. I've actually even had a friend who died of an overdose about a year and a half back. If you can't get over them, then it can be very, very costly. And if you can't get over them, then it's really hard to function in everyday life. Outside of the classroom, there are resources like the FYI program at the Mesilla Valley Hospital for anyone hoping to quit. Katie Beery, News 22. And Monica Cortez is next with the first look at weather. Thanks, Greg. Well, we have been seeing quite a bit of a change in weather today. We are seeing those calm breezes and it's been a little bit chilly today. We are seeing those partly sunny skies. Our temperature right now is at 63 degrees. Our winds are coming from the west at 19 miles per hour. Our humidity is at 17 percent. Our dew point is 16 degrees and our barometer is just above 30. Taking a look at those highs for today, we were way below average at 63 degrees with an overnight low of 41. Now back in 1989, we did have a high of 91 degrees and then 1973, we did have a low of 30 degrees. Now we haven't seen uh, rain at all for today, so our yearly re precipitation still stands at 0.29. Back to you at the desk. Governor Susana Martinez has lost a court battle over whether the state can impose energy efficient building requirements. Former Governor Bill Richardson implemented the requirements, but Governor Martinez said they were too expensive for developers and owners and could hurt the economy. The court sent the decision back to the Construction Industries Commission to reconsider. The so-called Green Building Code is considered the most environmentally friendly in the country. And Governor Martinez has signed a bill into law that will provide over $13 million for projects in Donia Anna County. Two and a quarter million will help pay for a new 911 call center serving most police, 
fire and other emergency services in Doña Ana County. Three million will go to build a road to spaceport America and three and a half million for brick and mortar projects at NMSU. The Doña Ana County commissioners unanimously supported the Fort Sill Apache tribes plan for a casino in Luna County. Governor Martinez vetoed money the city of Roswell wanted for a statue of Hall of Fame golfer Nancy Lopez and her father. The $150,000 for a bronze statue was among $4 million Martinez rejected last week in a measure financing capital improvements statewide. The New Mexico Democratic Party reports collecting over $100,000 in contributions since last year. From December through March, the Democratic Party spent $134,000. Most of the money spent were transfers of money to a federal campaign account, which can pay for administrative expenses. ABQ Health Partners and Albuquerque Medical Group and Keystone Automotive Industries helped to donate $10,000 to the Democratic Party. Stay tuned. Monica Cortez will be back with your national forecast. And later... We'll give you a little taste of how American Indian Week is being celebrated. More on that when News 22 continues. Welcome back. You're watching News 22 Wednesday. Where news matters. Last week, we told you regions that NMSU approved a tuition increase. Yesterday, a tuition increase was also approved by the regions at the University of New Mexico. The tuition increase is meant to pay for higher salaries for faculty and a one-time bonus for staff and funding increase of $900,000 for the athletics department. The increase means students will pay about $600 more per semester. Now that we know who is in the running to become the new NMSU president, the next few weeks are going to be busy for the five finalists. Each of the candidates is scheduled to spend a day and a half on campus. They will meet with the faculty, Senate, staff, members, and the NMSU Community College presidents. ASNMSU is hosting a student forum for each of the candidates. There is also meetings through their time with foundation members at NMSU. The last of these meetings will be on May 2nd. The regents expect to announce the next president on May 10th. Riding bikes as a means of transportation is, a pop, is popular among NMSU students, but the attention bikes are getting isn't just good. Stephen Seely reports on how bike thefts have become a serious problem for students. When James Bennett went home for winter break last semester, he couldn't fit his bike in his car. So he locked it up on the bike rack at Pinon Hall on campus. Come back after the month of break and it's gone. Everything's gone. Chain's gone, uh, the lock, everything's gone. Trevor Nigren had the same thing happen to him at the same place. And then I brought it back to the dorms and then I got up late for class and went down there and it was gone. Most bike owners tend to believe that whenever they lock up their bikes, it'll still be here when it gets back. But that's not always the case here on campus. Both Trevor and James said they didn't go to campus police because they don't feel anything would be done. Lieutenant Hodges encourages bike owners to report the theft and help them out. It's probably one of our main issues right now and one of our main objectives. But he says students can help by registering bicycles and use better locks. Make sure that they're not protecting a $2,000 bicycle with a $4.50 lock. Stephen Seeley Jr., News 22. To register your bike, visit the NMSU Police Department located at the corner of Union Avenue and College Drive. And a U.S. Border Patrol agent pleaded guilty to accepting a bribe after smuggling an illegal immigrant into New Mexico. Gabriel Burke is facing a 15-year prison sentence and a $250,000 fine. Las Cruces Crime Stoppers is offering a $1,000 reward for information on two suspects who stole money Monday evening. The men are African American and both around 300 pounds. One man was described as 5 foot 11 inches and the other around 5 6. And the trial continues for a Las Cruces police officer who killed a man by shooting him four times. Witnesses say the victim, Lance Hummel, was holding a sword but was not threatening the officers. Hummel's family is suing, saying the shooting death was unjustified. And Monica is next with the weather.gov national forecast. 
Thanks, Greg. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at an overview of what today looked like here in New Mexico. We are seeing those skies pretty much clearing up. Those winds are coming to a breeze. It is getting a little bit cooler. And as you can see, Las Cruces was pretty much at 64, 65 degrees overall. Taking a look at our next weather map, this is where all the action is at. Now for tonight, we are going to be experiencing a thunderstorm threat in the entire southwest coast. Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and even Alabama are all going to be experiencing heavy rainfall for tonight. Now for tomorrow, as you can see, large hail, strong winds, and even a tornado warning is in effect for places like Florida and the Carolinas. Now that uh, storm system is going to be heading towards the east coast. Right now, this section does not exist pretty much. We are still stuck in uh, Texas and Alabama and Louisiana. Taking a look at our next map, we can better see what's going on. Now over here in the east coast, as you can see, there is this big center of severe thunderstorm possibilities for that area. And as you can see, that cold front is going to be making its way towards the east, and that's what's going to be pushing that rain system towards that area. Now over here in the west part of the country, as you can see, that uh, cold front is moving towards the west, and that's what's pretty much causing those strong winds and really chilly temperatures in our region. Now as you can see, this is something that we do need to note. Uh, there is ice rain. Pretty much what this is, it's an ice storm, and it is going to be causing a lot of damage in those areas. Now taking a look at our next weather map, we are going to be seeing quite a bit uh, quite a bit of a range of colors and as you can see this yellow mark right here that is what's pretty much uh, where the system the storm system is at you can see those really really warm temperatures out in the east coast those 80s and 70s and pretty much the rest of the country is seeing those 17 and 20 degree temperatures now if you stay tuned I'll be telling you what New Mexico is going to be experiencing tonight and tomorrow so don't go anywhere I'll be back with your local forecast